Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video, I'm going to tell you guys about an amazing research opportunity hosted by the New York Academy of Sciences. This program is called the Junior Academy and I'll go over what this program is as well as my application tips. If you're thinking about building your resume or you just want to do something for fun, then this is the perfect extracurricular for you. Okay, let's start with an overview. So the New York Academy of Sciences is an international research program which garners applicants from around the world. And here is a map on their website detailing how many people are from which country. I mean, you're seeing people from the US, Canada, Egypt, India, and a ton of other places. And then applicants are from ages 13 to 17. So these are, you know, some of the youngest, most brilliant minds getting accepted. And because this program entails such a broad age range and could accept students from across the world, they can only accept so many, and I believe that there is actually a 10% acceptance rate into the program, which means that it is extremely selective. Okay, next up, you also get to work with prestigious research mentors and students from across the world. And if you actually go onto the Junior Academy platform, you can specifically select people you want to reach out to and form teams or even to work with researchers outside of the program. So it's a really good opportunity to learn more about scientific researchers within your country and also outside, which makes a diverse and engaging program in terms of both the science and humanities. It's also a really good connecting opportunity as well. And the main goal of this program is to create a research solution to solve global challenges. And here are some of the challenges the NYAS, or New York Academy of Sciences, has sponsored in the past. There is such a huge variety you can choose from, and I believe that they had this program during 2020, uh, the COVID year, so they had a lot of COVID-themed challenges, such as the impact of COVID-19 on non-communicable diseases, vaccine distributions, and so much more. The best part about this, these challenges is that they are also timely and they are truly relatable to anyone because it affects so many people. It's like when you're in class and you're like, oh, when are we going to use this in real life? And I feel like these challenges answer just that because it essentially is real life that you're working with. So the New York Academy of Sciences hosts two challenge sessions, one in the fall and one in the spring. So during the fall session, there will be about two or three challenges that they'll sponsor. And then in the spring, there will be another two or three challenges that you can compete in. So the real question is why join? Well, the first reason is obviously so you can connect. And so when you're trying to find solutions to these challenges, you get to work with teams of six and with an experienced research mentor. So obviously you get a ton of that leadership and teamwork experience. And then from there, you can de designate who will become the team lead. Um, so basically the person who will conduct all the Zoom meetings and pretty much take the initiative on what the solution and layout of your project will be. So for me, I joined during the fall semester and I was the team lead for two challenges. And here's kind of what the team page will look like. You can put down your solution description and this kind of acts as a platform for communication and just pretty much sharing ideas. And then during those challenge semesters, you can get to Zoom with your teammates and really have an engaging discussion on how to solve some of the world's most pressing problems. And what's really cool about this is that you often don't speak about these topics like in real life, right? So having these stimulating discussions is always a really good course to complete um, in the challenge and also in real life scenarios as well. And another really great thing about joining the Junior Academy Challenges is that you can potentially earn international level awards. So after the challenge is complete, the Global STEM Alliance will actually notify all competing members who won the challenge. And fun fact, my team actually won the Public Health on Climate Change Challenge, which was incredibly rewarding since we all worked super hard to develop a really innovative solution. This is an extremely competitive program where you have to compete with the best of the best. So really having that recognition is something to always look forward to. And so for the prizes, if you win, I believe in the past, so like 2019 and earlier, they actually gave you an all paid trip to New York so you could present your research at the Global STEM Alliance Summit. Here is actually a picture I found from a previous year. 
However, after COVID, so 2020 and beyond, I think they switched the events to be virtual, which is still an amazing opportunity nonetheless. And they'll provide you also a $250 Amazon gift card and free access to an educational course, which again is still super awesome and I'm really thankful about that. Keep in mind that the incentives may change year to year, so this may not be accurate for either next year or in the future. And then, of course, you also get certified, which is always great, so you can always have something to look back on. And in my opinion, I think probably more important than the awards or prizes is that you really get to develop your research skills. You get to do tons of research analysis and critical thinking to develop a creative solution. And so for my team, we actually created a telemedicine app. We did a a couple surveys, created an app prototype, and it was all super cool to see our vision kind of come to life, which is awesome uh, because we were able to research ways we could solve a problem and actually solve it with something that the New York Academy of Sciences Junior Academy really does provide you, which is a ton of sources, a ton of mentorship, and it's all just a really incredible experience. And yeah, here are just a couple snippets of our research. Obviously, there is a lot of work that goes into this, but it is so worth it. Okay, now that you know a little bit more about the Academy and its benefits, let's now go over the application process. So how does it all work? Well, the New York Academy of Sciences says on their website about their application process and what they look for in strong applicants. What they're looking for is a community of passionate students who truly do want to change the world, so there is a very selective process when doing so. Also, on the website, they list out who can actually join, so you have to be 13 to 17 years old and fit within the birthday months. Keep in mind that those months are for the 2022 to 2023 program. For the actual application process, they require you to fill out some background information, which is like phone number, email, birthday, and other stuff like that. Then you'll respond to some essay questions, which I'll go over in just a moment, and you'll also need to have a parental or guardian consent to join the program. Now let's go on to the essay questions and really dissect what the New York Academy of Sciences wants to hear from you. So question number one asks for you to list the STEM and non-STEM courses and extracurricular activities that you've been involved in. While this question is optional, I highly recommend because this is exactly what will make you stand out from the other applicants. So, as with all admission processes, there really is no X, Y, and Z to get you into a certain program. However, here are just some examples of what they might be looking for and what you can kind of keep in mind when answering these questions. You can put down any AP, IB, honor, or dual enrollment classes that you've taken any previous research experience, and school clubs or organizations that you're a part of, such as HOSA. Obviously, you don't need to have all of these requirements to get into the program because these are just some examples of what you could say, and remember that everyone is different and you can still get in even if you haven't done any of these. Now for question two, it asks why you want to be a part of the academy and what you'll get out of the program, and also what makes you a strong candidate for the program. These types of questions are incredibly loaded, so it's wise to break it down. So I'm going to kind of explain the first part, which reads why you want to join the program. So again, you don't have to necessarily list everything on here because they are just examples, but you can say that you want to develop your research skills, connect with other people and researchers, and even develop your leadership skills. For the second part of the question, it asks what you'll get out of the program. So for me, what I put is that I'll be able to solve important global challenges that we actually need to solve in the real world, as well as essential researching and collaborating skills for the future. And the last part of the question is, what makes you a good candidate? Really what this is asking is what makes you unique out of all the other applicants? So you can just elaborate on some personal attributes and qualities you believe are specific to you. You can also list out any past research projects and experiences, or even talk about your passions and why you would be a valuable asset to the program. And for the last essay question, question number three, the question states for you to think of an existing problem and how you're going to solve it. 
I think this is probably the most important question out of all of them because it shows the readers not only what you're interested in, but also how you're going to find solutions to it. This is exactly what researchers and scientists do when in identifying a problem and creating a good hypothesis, so in essence, it's pretty much testing to see if you can do this as well. The answers for this are incredibly broad, and again, there isn't a single pinpoint answer. Really be true to yourself and what you want to change. Think of problems that hold value to you, such as combating climate change or making healthcare accessible to all. It all just depends on what you believe and what you believe should be solved. Once you've identified a problem, think of ways you can solve it. You can find a lot of solutions on the internet or even create one on your own. Alright, and that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. Subscribe if you learned something new. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!